Uh, so, retractable landing gear. We've been talking about the nose landing gear for a while now. It's taken some time, and that's because the process of designing retractable landing gear is actually pretty challenging. There are a lot of conflicting requirements that all need to be met at the same time in order to come up with a good design. For example, the landing gear needs to be pretty strong to withstand hard impacts on hard landings, but at the same time it needs to be lightweight and compact so that it can retract back up in the fuselage so that it's not hanging out in the breeze and causing excess drag. A big challenge for us is just getting everything to fit when it folds up to retract into the airplane. We don't have a lot of space to work with, so we have to be really clever about how everything folds up. We've come up with three different designs for the retract mechanism at this point. We've modeled them all up in Onshape. And throughout that process, we've learned a little bit about how to manage a bunch of different designs in parallel. Onshape has some unique functionality that makes it easy to manage multiple designs. I wanna talk more about that and show more of our current design in the CAD model, and also talk about how we use Onshape as a tool throughout the process of designing the landing gear. Let's jump into it. We'll take a look in the CAD environment to see our latest nose gear design. Let's take a look. We're looking at the full assembly for the nose gear, the engine mount, and the nose gear wheel well. And also included in this is the actuation system for driving the nose gear up and down like this. I'll go over some of the main components in this assembly so that we're all on the same page when it comes to the terminology. So of course at the end of the strut we have the wheel and tire and that's supported by the fork. There's a strut end here, and there's a strut tube that telescopes inside of these components, which are called the trunnion halves. There's a front and a back half for the trunnion halves. Those are supported by these arms. We don't really have a good name for these other than just the, the arms. And those are riveted to these components here. These are the engine mount halves, so these are called the uprights. And then um, also supporting the trending halves, we have this long skinny member called the drag links. And there's actually a lower and an upper half. The lower half is right here. There's a left and a right half. And then the upper drag link, let's hide this so we can see. Upper drag link is right here and that's mounted to the drag link mount which is bolted into the wheel well. These components here, these panel structures are the wheel well. And also mounted inside the wheel well are some gas springs. We got two of those and those push on the trending halves to extend it in the event of an emergency if we have our actuation system fail, which is here. Uh, this motor drives the trending halves up and down and those uh, are coupled to the trending halves with some gears. Those gears are integral into these arms so those act like a, a gearbox as well and closing these gears to drive the trending up and down. The gear retract motion looks like this. All the animations of the gear we've ever shown online were really just screen records of motion simulations like this from an Onshape assembly studio. You're looking at an assembly studio right here and it's basically just a workspace where you can build assemblies made up of individual parts. An assembly isn't too exciting alone, but what's really useful for us, especially when we're designing retractable landing gear, is that in the assembly studio we can simulate and study the motion of landing gear components like the drag links and the gears that drive the strut up and down. You can see we have a lot of pieces and parts here all working together, so there's a lot to keep track of. And as I mentioned before, we came up with three completely different retract mechanisms that folded up in different ways. We had one driven by a stepper motor and another driven by a linear actuator. And now our current design uses a DC motor coupled to a gearbox. For each design, we simulated the retract motion to look at how everything would fold up and we checked for clearance between moving parts to find any potential interferences. All this is really hard to visualize with just a static drawing or a static CAD model, so you really need to see the full range of motion to expose potential interferences along the entire retract path. So using assemblies with motion simulation and on shape was really useful for us while we were trying out different retract geometry. Motion is pretty common in CAD, but what's unique in Onshape is that Onshape has some functionality to allow us to handle all these different designs that we're coming up with for the actuation system. That functionality is handled in this window called the versions in history. And so what that's doing is documenting the progression of our design as we iterate on it and try new things. So you can think about your design like a timeline, and that's shown with this blue line here. And every time something critical happens along the design, like say we want to freeze something so that we can machine out the part or we're going to freeze the drawing so that we can send it to a supplier for a quote, 
we'll document that with a version, and so that's represented by a solid dot along this timeline. We initially started out with our linear actuator mechanism, which looks like this. We have the engine mount and the structure to mount the nose gear trunnion and the linear actuator. So we built this whole thing up and we machined out the parts and tested it and we learned some things that we wanted to try, but we didn't know if it was gonna work. So the way that's handled in Onshape is with branching. So in a conventional CAD program, you'd probably do a save as and then try a different design. In Onshape, you can branch off of your existing design and try something else in parallel. So we tried out a gear-driven actuation system, and that's shown with this purple branch coming off of our main branch. So look at that. This is our latest version of some of the parts for the gear drive mechanism. So we have the same uh, vertical upright components for the engine mount, but then we have different structure here to mount the trunnion, and then we have a different actuation system, which is a motor coupled to a planetary gearbox. And in Onshape, it gives you the ability to compare your different versions. So you're comparing uh, these snapshots in time along your design history. So let's take a look at that comparison. With Onshape's compare tool, you can overlay different versions and then see what changes have been made between those different versions. So it's pretty obvious or pretty dramatic changes between our first linear actuator mechanism in red here compared to our latest gear drive version shown in blue. So we've changed up the vertical uprights for the engine mount, removed all these holes and gone with a thinner wall tube. And then obviously this structure is now removed with our current gear drive mechanism. So not only can you see these changes visually with the compare feature, uh, you can also see the list of individual features that were used to make these different designs. So it's actually showing out all the features listed out and then comparing how they stack up relative to each other. And this is really useful because sometimes uh, these changes are subtle and you don't know exactly what's changed. So let's take a look at an example of that. Uh, when we did our gear drive mechanism here, we built this plate to mount the drag links. So we, we machined this out, but then we had an idea for an even lighter version. Let's take a look at that. I've overlaid the latest drag link mount design here, but then along the way we had an idea for a different drag link mount that's a little bit more whittled down and had some weight removed, also removed some fasteners. So this one's a little bit more optimized. And this is showing that uh, this branching functionality doesn't only have to be used for some major changes like going from a linear actuator to a gear drive. You can uh, also be just trying out some small iteration on a component like just changing a single part. So this is a branch off of a branch uh, on the gear drive mechanism. And What's really nice in Onshape is that when you have figured out what you want to do or when you want to commit your change to your production design, you can actually merge those features in your branch into the main design. And that's pretty unique to Onshape where in conventional CAD you would just do a save as and you'd lose that relationship between your exploratory branch and your original design. This is maintained in Onshape. So your entire design history is all linked together and at any given point you can merge your modified design into the old design. As long as we're talking about weight, I mentioned that we're trying out a different version of this mount plate that's a little bit more whittled down and has some weight removed. A really cool thing in Onshape is that we can check the weights of all our different components. Checking weights is a normal feature in CAD, but we use this a lot. Uh, it's really critical to know the weights of all your parts when you're making an aircraft component or building up an entire aircraft. So you can see here I've measured the weight of this component. We're looking at 1.758 pounds. The way this works is you just input your material properties for your component and then uh, based off the density and volume, Onshape can split that out. And it can also calculate the center of gravity of the component in XYZ coordinates. You can see that here. And that's also critical for aircraft where you have to maintain your weight and balance in a certain window to maintain proper stability margins. And we can roll up into this weight tally as many components as we want as long as there are material properties assigned 
for the components. It'll keep adding them up and it'll keep summing the center of gravity for that assembly. So we've um, included the uprights for the engine mount and these arms here in our tally. We're looking at 6.288 pounds for those. You can see the center of mass of that in X, Y, Z coordinates and you can see that visually here. So that is a really nice feature that we use quite a bit. Uh, we get a lot of questions about where we stand in our weight total relative to target. Uh, we have really good predictions from our CAD model, so it's no surprise when we're uh, going and building parts and comparing our measured weight values to our actual values. Um, thought I'd comment on that because we get a lot of questions about that. Anyway, back to the branching and merging. Uh, another cool thing with this functionality is that you can collaborate with other team members to accomplish your design. So you can see in this history, Keegan and I have both been working on the design for a while, dating back to 2020, and we've both been involved along the way. Whereas uh, with conventional CAD, it's not as collaborative. If you're ge both getting involved on the design, you can step on each other's toes. So uh, with two people working on it, you can just make a branch and each guy can work on their own design. And this really starts to shine uh, the bigger your team is and the more complicated your design is. We only have two guys working on this, so um, it's still useful at this scale, but you can imagine uh, with a bunch of people working on a really complicated model, this would be really useful. The cool thing about this functionality is that it allows us to explore different designs really freely while still being organized in our approach. So we're pretty wrapped up with the design and lately we've been working through the actual process of manufacturing these components. I've got the assembly for the drag links here. This is the lower drag links, upper drag link and drag link mount and the lock mechanism. Um, we're gonna have more videos coming out showing all the testing of all this as a full assembly, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you wanna check out Onshape, it's free to try. I'll leave some links in the description of this video. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw here, you can leave it below, we'll try to answer you. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.